what is going on everyone and welcome back to another monster hunter video today we're going to be looking at 10 monsters that should never return to monster hunter worlds and beyond now this title just captured me because normally you see 10 monsters you want to see in the game top 10 monsters you want to see um but this is a this is a list that says 10 monsters that should never return so it's intriguing and this video is by rathalos watch i will have the video down in the comments below without further ado let's check out this video welcome to rathalos watch today i am going to talk about my top 10 monsters in the monster hunter universe that i believe should not show up for monster hunter wilds or should just never come back in future titles this video might be a little controversial for the community and will probably stir up some strong opinions <laughs> but that's okay controversy can be fun it keeps it the comment be. section active and that's i true. love engaging with you all if you're excited for monster hunter wilds or just want more monster hunter content make sure to hit that subscribe button without further ado let's begin number 10 coolie Yaku. Yes, you heard me right. <laughs> so this picture is in the thumbnail of uh Rathalos's video. So I mean <laughs> it's no surprise to see. Um now not having Hulu in future future games. I mean you gotta have your small monsters that you can beat up on, right? Um I can see where they're probably coming from. You know, the fight's boring. Um but it is nice to just have a little the little large monsters to just kinda right, wear I'm out. I'm a tad tired of Koliaku. I do not think he is a terrible monster or anything, but I just had enough of him in both Monster Hunter World Iceborne and Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. He's an okay entry level monster. The only thing he has going for him is his personality and goofiness. I do think that him <laughs> stealing eggs is kind of an interesting mechanic and could potentially create a fun dynamic for Monster Hunter Wild's ecology system. But I am so tired of this dumb bird that I am okay with him <laughs> skipping out for the sixth generation. For the most part he's pretty much I mean, a punching bag as well but i, I think I most get it. early game monsters tend to be that way another reason i don't see him returning is because everyone has already experienced him both veteran and newbie hunters since he was a brand new monster that was True, introduced yeah. in the fifth generation so neither party will be missing out on anything special here number nine tidziaku <laughs> i mean yet again we have another one of the smaller large monsters i wonder if this is just going to be all smaller monsters um they have to put a big one in here. And if they're saying a big one, it seems like they're annoyed with repetitive monsters. So I'm assuming Rathalin, Rathalin, oh my goodness. Rathian, maybe Rathalos, or may make that list. Um, But now we have this monster here. Annoying with the blinding. Um, But again, you know, I personally like the larger monsters that are smaller, just as an entry level into the game, right? This is where you're kind of practicing your weapon, understanding your weapon. Maybe you are uh, can walk around and understand the map a little bit more in these hunts because they don't seem to be as serious as your bigger ones. So, I mean, I do personally, I like these as like entry levels into the game. Called degenerate needs to cease to exist. He is boring as hell, and in terms of visual design, bland as fuck. The only redeeming thing about him is that he can flash both the hunter and prey on occasion, which is an interesting ecological interaction with the world. Thank now again, I do agree. I mean, the large monsters that are on the smaller side, other than Karen, they are yes, they're extremely boring. I do agree with that hundred percent, but. Again, I just like them to just have in the beginning of the game for people to warm up on. And I mean, I like the things that I just said earlier. He was never a mandatory hunt in Monster Hunter World. And I've only hunted him once or twice. Only because I wanted to experience the monster for the first time and what it had to offer. And what it had to offer was absolutely nothing. It's a bland fucking fight and not really fun. I do not see a reason for him to return to Monster Hunter Wilds or even any future titles for that matter. I believe <laughs> like very I said. few people... Rathalos isn't wrong in what they're saying. These fights are incredibly boring. And these monsters do seem seemingly useless or just fodder in the food chain. Um, but, you know, like... He is like right with what he's if saying there. You did. Let me know in the comments so I can publicly shame you and roast you for having a degenerate taste. Nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I won't do that. Moss Hunter has something for everyone, but do it anyways for your boy's algorithm. Number eight, 
Hobi Kadachi. Again, very annoying, very repetitive. Um, I personally do like Toby Kadachi though. I like the design, I like this cool electric squirrel. I don't know if I would care to see Toby Kadachi in wilds, or maybe I will. I mean, because they have hordes of monsters. Can you imagine hordes of Toby Kadachi? Uh, that sounds like a, <laughs> a bad time. Jesus Christ, the weird electric gliding squirrel thing is annoying as hell with its jerky movements. On top of that, it electrocutes you. I've never had fun hunting this monster and only hunted it once because of a mandatory storyline. I mean, you are doing a lot of running when it does happen. It, you know, it can be categorized as one of those boring fights unless you kind of understand how Toby Gachi moves. But normally when you're playing Monster Hunter, you know, you're sizing up the monster, you're watching what they do, and you're trying to, like, counteract and get your attacks in when you can. At least that's how I play. Um, and then, you know, once I understand the monster, I can take a little bit more hits, be a little bit more daring, be a little bit more brave. But Toby Kadachi is just very fast and kind of just, <laughs> excuse me, <clears throat> just hops everywhere. And it's, <laughs> it is pretty damn annoying requirement i do not understand what people find fun about this monster it barely sits still always climbing trees or hangs onto them tail whips you all the time and tries to bite you i also had enough of him already appearing in two titles back to back in terms of a visual design i think he's okay i think capcom has completely wasted an opportunity though with making a cool gliding squirrel and now it's too late and we won't ever get a better designed monster that is based on that animal viper toby kadachi is even worse because he poisons you so you have to constantly cure yourself of and viper is faster and more sporadic the poison and bring along a max stack of antidotes with you yeah. and yes poison is absolutely terrible because you're running over the place trying to get viper while you're poisoned, so you need to antidote, but you're still trying to like run and dodge and move out the way and figure out the monster. <laughs> I do not like or care for this monster at all. He can stay locked up and never fucking return. Number seven. The Viper I can 1000% agree on. 1000% agree on. Cephadrome. This is one of the most terrible. Yeah. I mean. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> Honestly, uh, Rathalos is cooking here. This fight is very annoying too. It's very, it's very, very stupid. Um, I don't know. I think, I think they're made to. This monster is just made to be just annoying and monsters, not fun, especially in the older generations. I'm kind of glad it doesn't exist in the fifth generation, but I fear it may come back in Masanta Wilds or future generations. I fought this thing originally. Instead, back. instead, they should bring back like Agnatar. And Monster Hunter Freedom Unite on or the PSP, Tour. and all it does is spends time in the sand and never comes out. And if by some miracle it does <clears> pop out of the sand, it will tail whip you non-stop and then immediately burrow back into the sand again. As a hunter, Very you only have two choices. You either bring a ton of sonic bombs and try to kill this thing and pray for good RNG that you're not gonna get hit when trying to fight it, or don't bring sonic bombs and be forced to wait an eternity for it to jump out of the sand and then just do barely any damage, prolonging <laughs> the fight for another possible yeah, I 20 mean... or 30 minutes. Watching this footage in this video here, yeah, this is super annoying. Very annoying. Other than that, the monster is easy and barely does anything. He does spit sand at you, and that is the best time to <clears> hit him <throat> because his head is the most vulnerable weak spot. I don't think he should be returning. If Capcom does bring him back, though, for Monsanto Wilds or future generations, <laughs> then there needs to be some sort of a balance of how often he spends time in the yeah, sand. Yeah, make it a little honesty, bit more fun. I do not believe he will be returning to Monsanto Wilds simply because Balahara kind of fulfills that niche already and is far superior. Number six basil geese i strongly believe <laughs> i actually want to see basil geese i am like begging i love basil geese basil geese is one of my favorite monsters very slow very clunky um in my opinion quite easy to fight very predictable um and it's honestly basil geese is just good practice for your weapons again now basil geese is very annoying especially in Monster Hunter um, World Iceborne. Still annoying in Sunrise, or, uh, in Rise, not Sunrise. What, what, what's going on here? In Monster Hunter Rise, still super annoying. Um, 
Yeah. I believe that Basil Geese is an overrated monster and had way too much screen time for the last five years. The concept of an invading bomber is cool and all. For the first time, it was fun. But after a while, he it's got annoying. old really quickly. He is yeah. also not really a difficult monster to fight either. His visual design is nothing to brag about. And his soundtrack, while memorable, can get annoying and obnoxious over time. It doesn't justify him appearing in all of the Monster Hunter 5th generation titles. I also do not understand how some people find him a difficult monster monster he really doesn't do much he is very predictable yeah he's quite easy that, he is another flying vibrant which is another huge problem I'm it's crazy how like <laughs> i pause it and talk about what i talk about and then rathalos like basically says the same thing Sure you've I known promise I haven't seen this video. Just by now that the majority of the monsters on this list were introduced in Monster Hunter World, and that game generally had way too many flying vibrants, if you ask me. While the whole bombing aspect might be interesting for Monster Hunter Wilds in terms of ecological interaction with other monsters and its wilderness, I still rather have Basil Geese take a back seat and not return for the sixth generation at all. Honestly, <laughs> I would not even care if he returned or not in future titles either. I will never miss him. This monster does not interest me, and I had enough of him in the fifth generation for me i just i think i personally like the annoyance of basil geese number five or again i do not understand capcom's obsession with this monster this is another fight where it's very boring um he does a lot of the same moves he's just rolling a lot so you're trying to dodge the rolls a lot um again i don't think this is that hard of a monster to fight i do like the design um, I, I just like how it looks, but yeah, I mean, this is another boring monster. It's another boring fight. Um, and again, not like super challenging and, uh, God, I forgot the other one that rolls too, but it's just like this. You fight it earlier in the game. I think, um, I just can't remember the name of it. It's white and gray or something like that. Rada, 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 Radagon. Nope. Those are both, uh, Elden Ring people. <laughs> it starts with an R, but they both do the same thing. They're both boring. Most people do not like him or care enough to fight him. He is not interesting, and a superior version of him already exists, and it's called Radabon. I fought. There it is, guys. I was I was really off, but same thing. Oregon in Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate, and I just don't understand why Capcom keeps bringing him back. He really doesn't do much. His visual design is alright, but Rodabon still looks better if you ask me, and has a way better music theme. He also has a ton of health, and his chin takes a while to break. That's all fine and dandy, yeah. but honestly, for a high rank monster, at least in Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate, <clears throat> he is still very easy. He is very easy to dodge because of how slow he is, and it really isn't much of a challenge. I also do not understand why Capcom wasted time on him and gave him a subspecies, Steel or Oregon either. Don't get me wrong, yeah. I love Capcom. They are one of my most favorite Japanese developers and publishers, along Facts. with From Software. But from Facts. time to time, they make very questionable decisions, and keeping Oregon for such a long time is one of them. Number four, Mizutsune. What? Mizu? What? Mizu? That's crazy. I do get it, though. Mizu is another easy monster. Um, Very predictable, rotates the same moves a lot. It has... um audio cues showing you that it's going to do with super move or ultimate or whatever which makes it easy to dodge but i will say this is my favorite monster to practice hunt on or just um work on a new weapon or anything like that mainly because i kind of understand how mizu moves and you know it's not mizu's not anything crazy or fantastic but uh, the dragon version in Monster Hunter Sunbreak was very fun. I will say that and extremely difficult. I'm gonna get a ton of hate for this. But and the slippery part is very annoying whenever you do get hit with the bubbles. It's annoying. But again, I personally like the fight. I love Mizu. I do want to see Mizu again personally. But I'm sorry. I do not find this weird bubble water fox fun to fight. Is it a creative monster <laughs> from a design perspective? Sure. Water Much bubble fox. Someone like Jurtotos or Totos. 
However, his bubbles are annoying. I would rather fight Glavinus or Astalos instead. Out of all the Faded Four, Mitsutsuni is hands down the worst and most boring one. Visually, he looks fine, nothing too crazy about his design, but in my opinion, way too fairy tale looking compared to the usual more believable monster designs. My problem with him though is that he has been getting way too much love as one of the Faded Four. He has been in Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate and Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak in their respective base games as well. Where the hell is Gamma? People but I love have been begging for Gamma for forever now now gameth would be super cool we haven't seen gameth in a while and gameth is a extra large monster it'd be really cool to see gameth in wilds absolutely um per, yeah i mean yeah personally i would rather see gameth and mizu in wilds for reasons of repetition that does make sense um yeah yeah right yep and if anything, she deserves it more than anyone else out of the Faded Four. Unfortunately though, if you watch my 11 Monsters leaked video that exploded in popularity, it seems that Mitsutsuni will be returning as a post-launch title update monster sometime after the game launches, assuming that the leak is real. Of course, that doesn't really surprise And I wonder if it's going to be Violet Mizu. I mean, again, this is a speculation leak we don't know. I haven't watched the video. I probably will. Um, I do like this video so far, so... I probably will. Um, but yeah, if it's like Violet Mizu, that'd be fun. That'd be cool. Surprise me considering that Mitsutsuni is Capcom's favorite stepchild, or one of them anyway. If you want to check out that video, you can click on the card in the top right. Number three, Paolumu. I don't. Yeah. Yeah. Super annoying. Very annoying. Very, very, very. With the suck in the wind and kind of slowing you down in the wind. And then it does like these weird sporadic movements and stuff. The design is kind of weird, but I like it. It's like a flying mouse that like puffer fish kind of thing. I don't really know, but I like the design. It's just unique, but the <laughs> very annoying. That's uh, there's just the way to sum up the, the hunt. I don't know of any person that likes this ugly floating fucking bat. I am not sure what Capcom was thinking <laughs> or better yet smoking when creating. And then the nightshade one is much worse. You go to sleep and you get hit with the sporadic moves. Yeah. This turd of a monster. And don't get me started on the nightshade Paolumu. That thing is even fucking worse. In it a is. nutshell, Paolumu is a flying vibrant that likes to puff himself up and then start floating in the air and diving you. Anytime you go on a hunt for this monster, you need to always have a maximized stack of flash bombs or otherwise it will get annoying real quick. In terms True. of fighting, he also doesn't really do much other than your typical flying vibrant attacks like tail whipping, biting, and so on. His subspecies, nightshade Paolumu, is the... So annoying. It's like the same fight, but you get put to sleep. And the wind seems like it's faster or something. I don't know. Same thing, but much worse due to the sleep element. And he spends way more time in the air and has a ton of more health, which doesn't help in making the fight more bearable. <laughs> just looking at this footage, it's just giving me memories of just getting destroyed just like this. All in all, it's just not an interesting monster, boring to fight, and has more of a fucking annoyance than anything else. Only fought him once, just so I can continue the storyline as he is part of the main quest. <laughs> Never again, Capcom, do not bring this ugly bat to Monsanto. Very Lions annoying. Yeah, titles. I agree. Number two. Jerotodos and Biotodos. Have you ever? It's good that you said both of them again. Th yeah, very annoying, very boring, very bland. Um, I do, however, have fun hitting Jerotodos out of the water, and then it does this little flailing attack. Then you just kind of wail on it. I do also, as a switch axe main, enjoy that you usually get power prolonger or rapid morph from Jerotodos armor. So. It is something that I like, at least in the um, world, I think that's what you got. Have you guys felt useless in your life, like you do not bring anything good to the table? Well, if you ever feel like that, please do remember that Jirotodos and Biotodos both exist, and those are more useless than anything else yeah, in this game. I mean, and they're both literally the same monster. One's just in water, one's in ice. They flop out the same, they look the same. I, yeah, yeah. Existence. And yes, I am going to cheat here a little bit and put them both at number two, simply because they are essentially the same monster. Jirotodos they are. and Biotodos are probably the laziest designed monsters I have ever seen Capcom create in the history of Monster Hunter. I really can't <laughs> comprehend what Capcom was trying to achieve with these two monsters. One is a boring fucking punching bag, Munch Shark, and the other is the same thing but in the fucking snow instead. Granted, yep. Biotodos is a little bit better than Jirotodos, but that is not really saying much. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. I 
they're, they're virtually the same monster. This board is a fantastic fucking expansion, but putting a monster like Biototus into a G-rank portion of the game is an insult to the fans and an embarrassment to Capcom. They could have done something far more interesting for an introductory G-rank monster. It's Instead, true. It's very true. The most terrible fucking monster from the base world, give it a different color, new name, and put it in the fucking snow. This is 100% maximum laziness. No offense, but that's just how it is. I will say though, Biototus offers some decent starting G rank armor that was the only good thing about it and the armor itself looked all right but other than that i never want to see either of them return in monster <laughs> hunter wilds this one i can definitely agree upon or in future absolutely generations. please do not forget to comment that you feel hopeless and useless so i can reply and remind you that your life isn't that bad after all Totus and Totus exist number <laughs> one Z what what zenogre what what okay one thing i one thing rathlos is probably going to talk about is how repetitive it is to season ogre that i can't agree with it is very annoying because an ogre has been in every game and Zenogre they haven't really changed the style of how Zenogre fights um maybe the apex one and then stignant as well same thing but dragon um it is an annoying fight Zenogre's very fast does a lot of AoE, does a lot of the same stuff. It's quite predictable. Um, I personally like Zenogre. I mean, it wouldn't be bad if they did skip one generation where Zenogre wasn't in it, just to kind of make you miss it a little more. But ultimately, I do like Zenogre. Zenogre. Yes, you heard me right. What is wrong with Zenogre exactly, you might ask? Well, nothing really except for one thing, and it's the fact that this wolf has made an appearance in a total of nine games, spanning across multiple generations. Exactly what all, I said. Which is absurd. Zenogre made an introduction in Monster Hunter Portable 3rd, came back in Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate, Monster Hunter 4, Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate, yeah. Monster Hunter Generations, mm -hmm. Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate, yep. Monster Hunter World Iceborne, and Monster Hunter Rise, and Monster Hunter Rise <laughs> fucking sunbreak look wolf boy i get that you're sure. really popular and in monster hunter now as well for the people who play on their phones to learn that everyone and their grandmother loves you along with capcom but you seriously need to take a step back go back to your fucking cage and sit there for a while or better yet go to a fucking <laughs> retirement home zin ogre is a great monster all in all but he really needs to chill out there are far more deserving monsters that deserve the spotlight as a matter of fact it's really sad how capcom is treating some of their one. underrated monsters like fucking redheaded stepchildren such as kiru peko giganox or even gobo I am. I feel like I feel like Repeko may make appearance here. It, I, it feels like Repeko would be a fitting monster to Wilds. Diganox, ah, absolutely not. That's just the other um ugly looking worm thing all over again. No, 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 no. I absolutely hate Giganox. So tired of hearing his soundtrack in every single fucking game. Don't get me wrong, Zenogre is a good fight, has great visual design, and a memorable soundtrack. But enough is enough, Capcom. Sadly, if you watched my 11. Gobel, I think is its name, would be really cool to come back. Um, This is Monster Hunter Try, whenever they had underwater fighting. Do I miss it? Yes. Do I want them to bring it back? If you know me, yes is the answer to that every single time. But this fight was really cool. I. Yeah, I agree. When monster leaked video, then you'll come to find out that Zenogre once again will be returning for the sixth generation after Monster Hunter Wilds comes out in a possible title update, assuming that the leak is real once again. I mean, I'm this sure. Surprise me one bit yeah, whatsoever. I'm sure after it's going to happen. He was rated number one monster out of 228 placements for Hunter's Choice during the 20th anniversary of Monster Hunter. So it's yeah. a no-brainer. And I mean, when that happens, they're going to continue to feed the audience because they know the audience loves Zenogre, so it's. But I do understand what Rathalos is saying here, 100%. ...that Zenogre is going to be returning pretty much every single generation at this point. I do not believe this dog is ever going on a break. And those are <laughs> the top 10 monsters that need to take a break or never ever come back ever again. Fellow hunters, let me know if you agree with this list or rather which monsters... Honestly, you think it's not a bad chance. list. Need to take a it's not a bad list. ...or even future titles We're in the subbing. comment section below. We're liking. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit like and subscribe yeah. with notifications turned on. Peace out and happy hunting Honest, honestly honestly really good video really really good video um wow i never just again this title just kind of threw me off and i was just i 
to watch it. I had to watch the video. But man, did Rathalos do a good job explaining himself? I think the list makes sense. And a lot of it makes sense. Um, and again, a lot of what I was saying or he was saying was the things that I was saying before he started talking. Again, I just promise you I didn't watch this video before. But you can tell that I also understand where Rathalos is coming from. Completely. Completely. Again, guys, Rathalos watch. Make sure you guys sub to his channel. Make sure you like his video. Again, it's going to be in the comments. Thank you guys for watching. And Rath, thank you for the good entertainment. I'll catch you guys in the next one.